Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my craft table and my channel. So glad you could join me this evening. Tonight's craft is going to be very easy beginner shaker card. Now I'm going to be using a mix of uh, some uh, elements that I have ink blended and also elements that I have cut out on my Cricut. So let, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into that project. This is an A2 size uh, card and you could use it portrait or landscape and I am going to use it landscape and on the back I am going to put one of my print and cut stickers that I use when I'm making cards and this one is a little ghost bat and pumpkin with of course my little channel logo. So I have a video on print and cut stickers. If you're interested in those, it's just a little kiss cut sticker. So this is the card base that we are going to build our shaker card onto. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. Then I'm gonna bring in my card panel. Now I have done some of the elements of tonight's card uh, previous to recording just to save time. So this was, 110 pound cardstock in white and I just ink blended and what I did is I took my distress ink I started at the top with mustard seed and I just blended down toward the middle letting it get lighter and then I did the same thing with spiced marmalade I went down here in the bottom and up toward the middle letting it get lighter and I did have to go back over these top and bottom perimeters just to make sure I could get the depth that I wanted. So those are already done. Okay. Now in order to build our shaker, so I'm actually going to turn my little misty this way because this is going to be the orientation of my card. And what I want to do is I'm going to use the candy corn little stamps from this Lawn Fawn Trick or Treat stamp set. If you're not familiar with Lawn Fawn and you're interested in getting into stamps, this is a great company to check out. Um, they have all kinds of really super fun and little uh, stamp sets. They do, some of them do have die sets to match and they are extremely cost effective. I want to stamp, I'm going to start over here. I think I'll put those there. And what I want to do is I want to stamp and not very, um, not very uh, dark, but just a little bit of an impression from these little candy corns. So I'm using my Momentum ink in Tuxedo Black. And I'm just going to do a light press. And the reason why is this is distressed ink. And I don't want the, the wetness of my stamp ink to kind of disperse the distressed ink. But so I'm going to move this over some. I'm just going to kind of play around a little bit. Get some of these little candy corns on here. And what these will do is these will stay in place when all of the other shaker bits are, you know, tossing around in the little pouch. Okay, so now that I am done with the stamping. I'm just going to set all of this aside since I don't need this anymore. Now what I want to do is I want to bring in some alcohol markers. These are actually from Hobby Lobby and so I'm just going to use these to make the elements just a little bit more um, vibrant and then I'm going to be using a clear shimmer pen from scrapbook.com. Scrapbook and this will add an element of sparkle 
I'm literally just going to come in here and I'm going to color all of my candy corns that are in the yellow area. Well, I'm going to color all of them orange and then I'm going to brighten the yellow as well. And then we will add the shimmer. <laughs> There are all my little candy corns colored and I really think going in with the orange alcohol marker was definitely a good choice. Now I know the yellow on the bottom is a little harder to see but up here it just is very vibrant. Okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clear shimmer pen and I really just want to put it right where the white of the candy cord would be. I absolutely love this little shimmer pin. This is beyond fun. Okay, it's just adding a little bit of sparkle. Okay, and then now you can see the little sparkle and shine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our shaker panel ready. So something with the shaker, I'm going to be basically going edge to edge for this shaker. And I'm going to be using some cellophane packaging that some of my supplies have come in. This is a great way to reuse and recycle materials. And um, I'm not cutting out a window, so I don't necessarily need it, a regular acetate panel, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up and cut this. Okay, and I'll save that other piece for another time. Okay, and then before I, before I start all of this shaker business, I am going to come in here and just a little bit. I'm going to add some anti static powder. I just don't want shaker bits to just kind of hang. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over. So I'm just going to take some red line tape and I'm going to put this on the three sides and leave the fourth one still um, covered. I'm going to go like this. Okay, so it's going to seal that edge. And I probably could have cut the cellophane down quite a bit more, but that's okay. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to cut some diagonals like that so that when I fold this up, it's not too bulky. Okay. So we are going to have our third side. There we go. And then I can trim away the excess. Okay, now for my fourth side, I'm just going to put down the red line tape, but I'm not going to pull up the release paper because I need to be able to fill the shaker. So now we have a little pocket. So let's go ahead and break into these guys. These just came in the mail and I'm super excited about these. So I'm going to open up my little pocket. 
And I'm just going to put in Let's see. That'll probably do. That'll probably do. Okay, I'm just going to set those off to the side. So now that I have my shaker fill in the pocket, I'm going to remove the last little wheel and I'm going to fold that over. Okay, and then Again, just like on the other sides, I will trim out the excess. So here is our shaker. This is so cute. All right. And some of these, there we go. Some of them wanted to be crazy. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to bring in this panel here and or this base and I'm going to adhere the shaker to the front of the card and then we will finish out the embellishment on the front of the card or the sentiment so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit more of this red line tape and I'm basically going to go around all four sides again, just like I did before. And then we will get this onto the card base. Now something that you hopefully will do better than I just did is making sure not to overlap your red line teeth so that you don't have to fight getting them off. And I just got this particular tape. Um, I wanted to try it out and I forgot to put some in my last order. So I just happened to be in Hobby Lobby, so I picked some up. And this stuff is great. It is extremely sticky, but it works really, really well. Okay, and I think I'm just gonna put one down the middle, or actually a couple. I am someone who uses a lot of adhesive, mainly because um, I don't want my creations to, you know, fall apart or anything like that. So now I'm going to make sure it's going the right orientation. Okay. And this was an A2 size panel, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have trimmed it down so that I could get a white border. So I took off about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Now we have our little shaker. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to do is we are going to put on a sentiment that I have gotten mostly prep. Okay, for my sentiment, um, I did a panel just like this, and I used my Cricut to cut out Trick or Treat, and then I cut it out two more times on white, so that I could layer it. And I've shown this recently um, in a couple of videos, but what I like to do is almost like an inlay. So I put this particular um, cardstock down and I had covered it with mint tape. And then what I did is I made some relief cuts and then I just put in the colored trick or treat, which is ink blended just like this. And then I just layered the other two white layers on top so that when I take these off, so these things here, we're going to release these. When I pull these up, everything will be really lined up perfectly because we're going to lay the colored 
the ink blended part down on this black shadow layer. So I did make a black shadow layer in Cricut Design Space. This is what I like to do. I like to blend, you know, regular card making um, techniques with my Cricut as well. So all I'm doing right now is just going through and pulling up the part that we don't need. By making cuts using my true control knife, it's really easy to be able to just, you know, tear away. This mint tape will act almost like a transfer tape. The benefit to doing this is that now my trick or treat is all lined up the way it needs to be. I'm going to go like this. I like to just try this a lot because I find that it works really well for me. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue this trick or treat into place on our shadow layer and I can um I can put my link to the design space file um or Cricut Design Space I can put that down in the description. Okay so I'm gonna very slowly pull up my mint tape, making sure that my letters are where they need to be. Okay, so it looks like that needs to move a little bit, and so does this one. Okay, that looks great. Now, while I'm waiting for this glue, to dry a little bit. I'm gonna bring back out my shimmer pen and I'm just going to go along my trick or treat. Now something I noticed is like here with my C you can see the layer but I'm not too worried about that. That's okay. It is a handmade card, and handmade cards, you know, they have little imperfections in them, and that's okay. This is going to be so fun when it's done, and this is a great way to add sparkle to your cards, and I just think sparkle is so fun. Okay, I think that's good. I'm just going to let this hang out for a second while I do a mid-craft cleanup, and then we'll get this on the front of the card. Okay, so now we need to, I'm going to pull this up off of my mat, and I'm going to save my mint tape for another project. It is excellent that you can reuse that. Okay, then I have some double-sided adhesive roll from scrapbook.com. And what I want to do is I'm going to put that on this side. Okay. And this is easy to tear. That's what I like about this. But I can just tear it. And it is a quarter inch wide. And it doesn't have any lock to it. It is completely flat. So now I'll just pull up all the release paper. Boy, that release paper came up really easy. That was very smooth. And I'm just gonna add some liquid glue here. Putting a little bit of liquid glue on top of your foam squares or your tape is very handy. Okay, so now I think 
I'm gonna try and get my fingers out of the way. And basically I just want to put this pretty much in the middle. So this is five and a half wide. Okay, and four and a quarter tall. But I'm just gonna do my best to line that up. And I'm gonna put that down. And I'm just gonna go straight down with my acrylic block for just a moment and let that gain some grip. Okay, I think that's good. This is our fun trick-or-treat shaker. And you can see the sparkle. It looks so good. I love the shimmer. Okay, well, that's all for this evening's craft. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until I see you in the next video coming up, as always, happy crafting. Join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.